Hi everybody, welcome, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. And today we are going to be, this is episode 13 from what I understand. So we're gonna talk about death. Have you thought about death recently? I thought about death recently a lot. Welcome to our roguelike Pico 8 tutorial where we're gonna do talk about death a lot. So we <laughs> so we had the situation where we have like some testing ground for a bunch of monsters. The monsters are now attacking us. And we can die now. I mean we disappear. <laughs> the game continues. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. <laughs> Um, so we kind of want to make sure that um, our um, that we can actually like there, there's an actual game over happening right now and kind of like a very important part of the game um, because uh, we will be probably dying a lot. Um, so let me see real quick where this is happening. Uh, we are I think we already had this level. Wait, what if Def M is player? Yeah. So we're deleting them up from the from the. From them. Um, but here we actually want to make sure that if a mob equals p mob. Um, no, actually, no. This is not where we're going to do the death now. Because if we do this now, we have to consider. Um, this hit mob function is being executed before the animation of the actual attack runs. So if our game is over here, um, you will be, what you will basically see will you will game go game over before you saw why you went game over. Even though it might be obvious for to you that you know there is no oh, there's going to be an attack coming and I will die very soon. Um, you actually want to see the actual animation play out before you go game over. Um, and so we're going to have to change this. I'm going to create a new function. That function is going to be check end. And that function will basically just check if uh, we lost for some reason. So we're gonna go like if a pmob dot hp is smaller or equal to zero, then that means we are dead. And we're gonna go upd equals. Um, we're gonna change the update function to update game over. Let me change this to update Gover. I like Gover. Almost sounds like the Muppet. My favorite Muppet. <coughs> UPD update Gover and um, um equals update uh, draw Gover. Um, do we have draw Gover? We don't have draw Gover. Let's draw Gover. There's just two draw functions in here, oh my gosh. Wait, I, what did I do here? This is the wrong function to write these things in. I'm not paying attention. There we go, draw over. Yeah, that's draw over. So draw over is gonna be just, we clear the screen. I'm gonna fill the screen with a color that is kind of like distinct for now, just so we see that it worked. And then I'm gonna print in like, 50, 50, you dead. And then like seven. Now, uh, we actually don't have a, a way of getting out of the game over screen yet, but that's fine. I just want to like make sure that, that this actually works. It did not work, obviously, because we're actually not checking for we're not running this uh, check end function yet. So this function is something I want to be running at the end of the AI's turn or at the end of my turn. So something along the lines. Oh, actually it would be also good if check end returned um, true if, if it found some kind of ending. So re return true, and otherwise return false. Here's why you kind of have to like manage the flow of the of the logic of the, how the game works. 
So imagine my turn is over and I did something stupid. I, I drank a poison or something and I'm dead immediately. Uh, in this case, I don't want to actually do any AI anymore, right? Because the game is over, so I don't want to like <laughs> see like opponents attacking my corpse or anything. So I'm gonna go if check end. Um, if not check end. Then do AI. Yeah, there's, I mean, we could do it the other way around and we can, could save a token. Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. Let's do it the other way around. I'm gonna return true if everything is okay and false if we should not continue with, with. <laughs> it will be one token, but it might be worth it. Is it an action token? Does it not? I'm checking it. It's a Gorem token. So I'm gonna do something like this. So, if, so checking if, if the check end um, did not result in a game over, then we do an AI. Uh, similarly here, when this, the AI's turn is over, if if the check end has not resulted in um, in something, actually here and we don't need this. We we kind of just can do check end here, because the check end will override the update once it, once it has been executed. I mean, technically, technically, we can also do this here because it do uh, then again check and will override the any kind of update changes, update function changes that the AI has done. So we don't actually need maybe the the returns. Yeah, it's fine. Something like this. This is my, my theory. Let's try this. Okay. So DRW was a nil value. Something didn't, didn't go well here, but uh, otherwise something happened. So that's already good. Draw Gover. Is, is it Draw Gover maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at us silly. Again, we're applying the functions, not the return value of those functions, but the actual functions. We put them in the variables. That's why no parentheses. It worked. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so this is going to be like a very simple. I tried actually initially my. <laughs> let me tell you a story of how I initially programmed this. Hmm. So initially, um, this was a way more elaborate menu system. Like um, we had a start screen. On the start screen, there was like a start game, and there was like a daily challenge menu point. Then you put press the start game, you would get like character selection screen where you could like pick different characters. You pick a character and then you are in the game. And then from the game, there was like a game over screen. So there was like a multiple step process. And um, <laughs> eventually I noticed that uh, uh, there was no really, uh, I was running out of tokens. So I had to like melt everything down a little bit. No correction, uh, character selection screen. That was the first thing to go. And then uh, I kept reducing things, and eventually I arrived at a system that was kind of like nice. I want to like implement here now as well, where the game just drops you into the game. You just like have a, like a logo on top of the actual game screen. You are immediately in like a hub area, and that hub area lets you kind of like test some amazing gameplay stuff, move your character around, and. Um, then you enter the stairs and then that's where the game begins. And I think like Spelunky kind of has a similar situation. It has a main menu, but it also drops you once you start the game, it drops you in a kind of like a starting area that is not yet the run, but kind of like you can like pick different things and talk to to this like um, cave digging character. I always like that. So um, we're gonna do that. And that also allows us to this, for this hub area to be kind of like our menu where maybe there's going to be like a second stair for the daily challenge if we have the space for the daily challenge. Or maybe there's like going to be like a stone tablet that you can read up where you're going to get high score list. I think that's kind of like a very nice and um, organic way of doing a menu system. Um, yeah, so what happens when you die, right? Uh, I do, do want to show a screen, uh, an actual screen when you die. I don't want to have like a summary. I don't want it to be like a, something that disturbs your gameplay where it's like you died, here's your result, and then you have to actually confirm it to go, go out. 
So this is a kind of like basically the only mode that we're gonna have. It's like this kind of like, okay, you died and you have to press a button now. Um, so for the update function, we're, gonna, 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 we're just gonna go with btn p um, five, let's, let's just go like this. Then, and then in this case, when you press the button, we're just gonna start game. So we should restart the game after we press the button on the start screen, the end screen. So we died. It's not working. Why is it not working? Huh, interesting. In the start game, we're not actually setting the update function. So let's do, let's put it at the end here. So now it works, except <laughs> the, the monsters are no longer here. That's fascinating. Yeah, that's because <laughs> the map doesn't regenerate, basically. Like, we created those things, but then, then we have, like, this loop that replaces all of the tiles with monsters. And then when we restart the game, the monsters are gone. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I'm not sure how to fix this problem. Well, you know, I mean, there's a there's a very cheap solution. We're gonna have to like, basically have like a alternate starting location, basically, right? Something like a yellowish starting location, and and um, so this will look like an empty tile, but in fact, it will spawn a monster. And so we're not actually replacing those empty tiles with the real tiles. We're just gonna like keep them around, so we're not doing the M set. Uh, zero, zero, 003. Uh, this is just a pre preliminary thing. In later on, when we generate our levels, we're gonna actually place the monsters uh, with our random number generator, and not using those tiles here. But you know, this I just made them orange so I can see myself them being different. But you see now, because we're not removing those tiles anymore, our monsters respawn correctly here. And then, of course, later if you if you're making a game like this, you can later just turn them gray. And then no longer nobody will see that there is a special tile that spawns monster there. Okay, okay. I'm gonna keep it orange, just just in case. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we have a game over thing, but here's the thing: I don't like how things are dying in our game. <laughs> so, for example, if I if I kill the monster, I mean it's very fast, but if I kill the monster, he kind of like immediately disappears. Uh, it's, it's very fast, and if I die as well, like it goes very fast, but also we saw it previously, when I died, I basically I disappeared. Um, it, I think it's, it's a bit too fast, and it would be nice if the, the corpses remained for a while. And also, I think it's very, like, look at this, like, if I get hit... Oh, I know what the problem is. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. So the the reason why I'm not seeing the final hit, if you look at it exactly, this goes very fast, but if you look at it exactly, you hear the final hit, but you don't see the final hit, the, the hit that killed you. And that's because the way we do the update right now, we were a bit too stingy with our tokens. See, because... Where is it? In the update function. Um, the, we do the AI first and then we check if, if we're dead. But the thing is like the AI already subtracts, like doing the AI already d does all of the attacking, all that stuff. And that actually already subtracts our HP. So um, if we do the check and directly after we do the AI, it will actually realize that we will die by the end of the animation, that we already died basically before the animation is played out. And it will um, put us in the in the game over screen before it actually had we had a chance to to see what the AI did. I mean, one solution would be to uh, to do the check and only after the AI has run its course. But I don't like that either because eventually we might have a situation where um, um, the AI's turn is being skipped because there is no active opponent on the on the screen. So that's also not a solution. So we actually have to go return to this the solution that we had at the beginning where this actually returns a value. Letting us know if there is 
if there was a change, if something happened here. Um, true if everything is alright, and false if we should, um, you know, we should, um, we should reconsider. So in this case, we're gonna go if if check end if everything is okay, then do AI like this. And down here we don't need that because this is after the AI's turn. Let's see if that works better. So you see that worked, but still, but still, you see that I disappear basically. And it's also kind of, also kind of weird because I disappear before the animation kind of like played out. And that's something that I also have when I am, I'm attacking the monsters. It's very fast, so, we, so you kind of don't see, but the, the monster disappears before my animation has run its course. Um, so I wanted to, I already hinted at that. I want to have like a set, uh, separate system to have mobs dying. I will call this, um, there will go be a, like a completely new second array called D-mob. That's where the mobs go that die. And um, when we kill a mob here, we're not just deleting it, but we're also adding it to D-mob. So we're gonna go add D-mob like this. And then we're gonna go like um, timer uh, or something like um, how did we call it for the menu for the UI? We, there is a term that we use for the UI. I'm gonna use the same term that we use for the windows. Uh, we call it dur duration. That's fine. So we want to show um, the the map for a certain um, uh, certain duration. Dur equals let's go 15. How did I do it last time around? Last time around I had 10, 10 frames. So let's go with 10 frames. Like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is in the draw function, and again, we're kind of like doing update stuff in the draw function, but again, it's all still fine because it's just like visual stuff. We basically do the same here, and you can already see that this is another opportunity for us to maybe uh, simple, um, simplify things a little bit. We're gonna also go through all of the D mobs, and first we're gonna draw the D mobs, and then we're gonna go draw the normal mobs. Um, that's fine. Everything is fine. And here's also when I'm gonna check if uh, m dot uh, or actually m dot dir minus equals one. If m dot dir smaller equals zero then delete d mob dead mob m you can put it after the drawing so now the the mobs will stick around for 10 frames after they they've been killed something is wrong of number but nil Interesting. Huh, huh. Ah, there's something wrong here. Oh yeah, this this is this is all wrong. We're adding to the D mob the 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 defending mob and we're removing from the mob. Yeah, that's that's correct now. Dur is a nil value. Huh. Okay. Oh, also that's also wrong. It should be this. Definitely. So many, so many mistakes. So now you see, like, it, it was. It's very difficult to see, but I, it, now it took my player a bit longer to stick around, and also now killing mobs. Is, um, uh, you can see kind of like them flashing out correctly. You can now even do something like, okay, um, we can actually make our mobs that are dying blink. That's also something you could try out. I've never tried it before. Let's maybe, let's see if this works. I'm gonna go if sign time 
uh, divided by two, uh, multiplied by two, if that's equals uh, greater than zero, then draw the sprite. Uh, it's it's too fast for for you to see. Maybe if we uh, bump up the duration to like, let's bump it up to sixty. Um, it's it's not fast enough, I think, for us to see. So you see, kind of like it's kind of fading out now. It's I kind of like it. Let, let's see if we uh, if this also works if we uh, make the duration lower again. It's like thirty only. Eh, that might be fun. Maybe twenty. Just going down to the original number. Okay. Let's let's see if ten works. Now, now, um, before we end this, I wanted to clean this up a little because we see there's kind of like a very similar thing going on here that is going on here. It's kind of like, there, it's, it's basically the same, right? I want to create a function that is basically draw mob. That contains all of this. That takes care, takes care of the flashing and everything. So this allows us to, for our mobs to be just like draw m, uh, draw mob m. And this allows us also for the mob stuff to also be like very. around like this and I'm even gonna go one step further it, it will cost us some tokens but I kind of like this if um, m is not equals p mob then and at the end we're gonna go draw mob Mob. So I want to like draw our player on top of all of, all of the other mobs um, because I think that we kind of like this problem that our player is the first mob that we add to the array. So it's the first play, uh, mob that we draw and all of the other mobs are on top of them. And so we're kind of always underneath the other mobs. So I kind of don't like it. It's nice when we are when we are the one on top. See, this is fine. This is, this is working good. So uh, the the visual feedback is now a lot better, and we kind of can fight with our with our uh, opponents. So the thing I want to be doing next, uh, I will be focusing on next, is gonna be. Um, I want to first of all, I I can like we're gonna tackle some visual stuff. Uh, first of all, I don't really like how I'm just instantly dead. Like um, it's you. S there was something happening. I was attacked. We saw the animation play out, but um, I, we don't really have a time to process it. Like it just shuts down and shows us like the de your the death screen. It would be nice if there was the screen was fading out, so it gave us or maybe there was even like a break. So it gave us the time to process what's happening. Um, so I want to add like fading in, fading out, all that stuff. 
And the other thing I want to be doing is I, um, you see that, okay, we get, when we get killed, when we get attacked, we don't actually see how much health we have. So I want to start adding this part where we actually have like a little health display in the corner. So these two things are going to be coming up in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching me. As always, text for this code, the, the text for this code, the code for this episode will be down in doobly-doo and you should join our Discord. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.